In the previous video, we saw that adding a dopant to silicon greatly increases the number of mobile charge carriers. Silicon doping is like acid-base chemistry in many ways. In water at room temperature, thermal energy breaks a water molecule into H plus and OH minus ions, which are then free to move around at random. If they happen to meet, they recombine to make a water molecule. Ions constantly form by thermal action and disappear by recombination. Adding hydrochloric acid greatly increases the number of H plus ions. Conversely, adding sodium hydroxide greatly increases the number of OH minus ions. In each beaker, the product of the H plus and OH minus concentrations measured in moles per liter is 10 to the minus 14. One liter of pure water has 10 to the minus 7 mole of H plus ions and an equal number of OH minus ions, and the pH is 7. Adding 10 to the minus 5 mole sodium hydroxide brings up the OH minus concentration to 10 to the minus 5 and reduces the H plus concentration to 10 to the minus 9. If you instead add 10 to the minus 5 mole hydrochloric acid to a liter of water, the ion concentrations are exactly the opposite, and so on. The law of mass action works in the same way and for the same reason for both pH chemistry and silicon doping. In this table, the ion concentrations are small numbers like 10 to the minus 7 because chemists measure ions in moles per liter and a mole is a big number. Whereas in this table, the electron and hole concentrations are big numbers like 10 to the 10 because materials scientists specify holes and electrons as particles per cubic centimeter. Next, we'll look at silicon that contains both acceptors and donors. To make integrated circuits, Engineers often start with a silicon wafer lightly doped with boron, then implant arsenic through the surface and incorporate the new atoms into the silicon crystal. The arsenic atoms release mobile electrons, some of which recombine with existing holes. Now we have adjacent p-type and n-type regions. This is a p-n junction which has some interesting behavior that I describe in another video. For now, I want to show why acceptors can be ignored when vastly outnumbered by donors. I'll demonstrate this using chemistry first. If you put 10 to the minus 3 mole of hydrochloric acid in a liter of water, it produces 10 to the minus 3 mole of H plus ions, resulting in a pH of 3. If you also add 10 to the minus 5 mole sodium hydroxide, which is one hundredth as much, the H plus concentration is reduced by 1%, and the pH is hardly affected. For the same reason, if you add 10 to the 16 atoms of arsenic and 10 to the 14 atoms boron to a cubic centimeter of silicon, the effect is nearly the same as adding just the arsenic. This makes it practical to fabricate adjacent regions having opposite types of mobile carriers. In the table of properties, here are some more rows. Silicon dioxide, which is used as an insulator in integrated circuits, has zero mobile particles and practically infinite resistance. At the bottom of the table, copper metal, which is used for wire routes in integrated circuits, has one mobile electron for every single atom and practically zero resistance. 